Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're diving into the world of ginseng. Ooh, ginseng. Yeah, you know, it's something that I think we've all heard of, but I don't know that much about it. Yeah. So our listeners are really curious about the health benefits of ginseng, how it's used, and, you know, if it really lives up to the hype. Right. And honestly, digging into the research, I am already a pretty intrigued. Yep. I mean, ginseng has been used in traditional Chinese and Korean medicine like for centuries. Wow. That kind of history definitely makes you wonder what's the secret. Absolutely. It's got deep roots in traditional medicine. Yeah. But what's so exciting is that modern science is actually starting to validate a lot of its traditional uses. Right. There's just a growing body of research, <laughs> you know, exploring its potential benefits. And the findings are really fascinating. Yeah. And it goes way beyond just boosting energy, which is what I think a lot of people think of first. Right. We're talking potential cognitive benefits, immune support, even possible applications for heart health and blood sugar regulation. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty impressive resume for a humble root. It is. Okay, so let's start with a term that pops up a lot with ginseng adaptogen. Okay. What exactly does that mean, and what makes ginseng so special in this regard? Well, an adaptogen is basically a substance that helps your body deal with stress more effectively. Okay. It's like a personal trainer for your stress response system. I like that. Yeah, so it doesn't block stress altogether. Okay. But it helps your body become more resilient to all kinds of stressors, whether they're physical, mental, or environmental. So it's about giving our bodies the tool to kind of handle whatever life throws at us, which I think we can all appreciate these days. For sure. Now, we keep hearing about these ginsenocides as being key players in ginseng's effects. Yeah. Can you tell us more about those? So ginsenocides are a unique group of compounds found in ginseng. Okay. And they're powerful antioxidants. Mm -hmm. Antioxidants, as you might know, help protect our cells from damage caused by free radicals. Yeah. Those unstable molecules that can really wreak havoc. And this protective effect is thought to be linked to ginseng's anti-inflammatory properties as well. So it's like a double whammy of protection. Exactly. Now, this is where it gets really interesting for me. Okay. Let's talk about ginseng in the brain. Uh-huh. Can it really make you smarter? Well, I wouldn't promise it'll turn you into a genius overnight, but the research on ginseng's cognitive effects is really promising. Okay. Studies suggest that it can improve memory focus and even reaction time. Really? In fact, one study found that taking ginseng extract significantly boosted working memory and mental performance in healthy young adults. Wow, that is impressive. Yeah. I'm always looking for ways to sharpen my mental edge. Yeah. Speaking of which, what about ginseng's reputation as an energy booster? Okay. Does it really live up to the hype? It has a long-standing reputation for combating fatigue, and science is starting to understand why. Mm -hmm. It seems to work on a cellular level by increasing what's called ATP production, which is essentially the energy currency of our cells. So it's giving our cells more fuel to run on. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And it's not just a quick caffeine-like jolt. Ginseng may actually help address that underlying fatigue by supporting your body's natural energy production processes. Interesting. So it's not like a Band-Aid. It's actually helping the problem. Right. Much yeah, better yeah. than a temporary fix. Yes. Okay, on to another area that's super relevant these days, immune health. Okay. Can ginseng really help us avoid getting sick? There's definitely evidence suggesting that ginseng can give your immune system a boost. Okay. It can stimulate white blood cells, which are our body's first line of defense against infections. Right. Studies are exploring its potential to reduce the severity and duration of colds and flu, and the early findings are promising. So maybe it can't make us totally immune, but anything that can help us get through cold and flu season a little easier is worth considering. I agree. Now, circling back to ginseng's long history of use, it's also been traditionally used to help regulate blood sugar. Yes. What's the modern science saying about that? So ginseng may offer benefits for those with type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes by helping regulate blood sugar levels. Okay. Research suggests that it may enhance insulin sensitivity which is crucial for how our body uses glucose for energy. Right. And it may also help with insulin production itself. Wow, that's pretty powerful stuff. It is. It seems like ginseng is multi-talented when it comes to health benefits. It is. What about heart health? Okay. Any interesting findings there? There's some encouraging research suggesting that ginseng may improve blood circulation and reduce oxidative stress on blood vessels. Mm. Some studies have also shown a positive impact on cholesterol levels. Okay. For example, there's evidence suggesting ginseng may help to lower bad LDL cholesterol and increase good HDL cholesterol. 
That's good news for our tickers. Yes. Okay, I have to ask about this one because I, I know a lot of people are curious ginseng's reputation for boosting libido. Right. Is there any science behind that claim or is it just an old wives' tale? Well, ginseng has a long history of use in traditional medicine for sexual health, particularly in men. Interesting. And while more research is needed in this area, yeah. some studies suggest that ginseng may increase testosterone levels and improve sexual function. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So those ancient traditions might be onto something, though. As, as you said, more research is always helpful to really understand the nuances. Absolutely. Shifting gears a bit, what about ginseng's potential role in cancer prevention? Okay. I know that's a topic a lot of people are interested in. This is an area where we need to be cautious mm -hmm. and emphasize that more research is needed. Okay. However, some studies indicate that ginseng might play a role in preventing certain cancers, mm -hmm. possibly due to its potent antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. Right. Remember those ginsanocytes we talked about? Yeah. They might be key players here. They're not a guaranteed shield against cancer, but potentially another tool in the arsenal. It's exactly. It's important to remember that ginseng should not be seen as a cure for cancer, but potentially as a supportive measure alongside conventional treatments. Of course. Always, always consult with your doctor before making any decisions about cancer prevention or treatment. Absolutely sound advice. Yeah. Now, for those who are thinking about trying ginseng, let's get practical. What are the different ways it can be taken? So ginseng comes in a variety of forms, okay. each with its own pros and cons. Mm -hmm. You can find it as a powder, which can be added to smoothies or even sprinkled on food. Oh, wow. There are also capsules and tablets for convenient and consistent dosing. Right. Ginseng extract is a more concentrated liquid form that could be added to drinks. So there's an option for pretty much every taste and preference. Right. And of course, there's the mm -hmm. traditional method of brewing ginseng tea from the dried root, which can be quite a relaxing ritual. Yes. Some people even chew on the raw or dried root for maximum potency. Yeah. But that can be a bit intense for some palates. Yeah, I can imagine. It sounds like there's a whole world of ginseng experiences to explore. There is. But before anyone runs out to stock up, we need to talk about safety and precautions. Okay. Is ginseng safe for everyone? Ginseng is generally safe for most people when used in moderation. Okay. However, like any substance, it can have potential side effects. Right. Some people might experience mild side effects like headaches, upset stomach, or difficulty sleeping, especially if they're sensitive to stimulants. So it's always best to start slow and see how your body responds. Exactly. And it's crucial to consult with a healthcare professional before using ginseng. Yeah. Especially if you're pregnant or breastfeeding or if you have any pre-existing health conditions. Mm -hmm. They can help you determine if ginseng is appropriate for you and advise on the right dosage and type. Great advice. Always better to be safe than sorry. Well, this has been a fascinating deep dive into the world of ginseng so far. It has. We've covered a lot of ground, but there's still more to explore. Yeah. Welcome back to our deep dive into the fascinating world of ginseng. I'm so excited to dig into some listener questions. Okay. We've had some really great ones come in. Yeah. And I know you've got the expertise to unpack them. Let's do it. All right. First up, we have a question from Sarah. She asks, I've heard there are different types of ginseng. Can you explain the differences and which one is best? That's a great question, Sarah. Yeah. You're right. There are several types of ginseng. Mm -hmm. But the most commonly discussed are Asian ginseng, American ginseng, and Siberian ginseng. Okay. While Siberian ginseng isn't technically a true ginseng, mm. it's often grouped in because it shares some similar adaptogenic properties. So what sets them apart? Asian ginseng is generally considered more stimulating. Okay. Think of it as the get up and go ginseng. Okay. It's often used for boosting energy and enhancing cognitive function. Right. On the other hand, American ginseng is thought to be more calming and balancing. Okay. It's sometimes used for stress relief and relaxation. Interesting. And then we have Siberian ginseng, which is often touted for its immune boosting and stamina enhancing properties. So it really depends on what you're looking for. Exactly. The best type really depends on your individual needs and goals. Right. For example, if you're looking for a pre-workout boost, yeah. Asian ginseng might be a good choice. Yeah. If you're feeling stressed and need some help winding down, American ginseng could be more suitable. And for overall immune support, Siberian ginseng might be worth exploring. It's always a good idea to do your research and consult with a healthcare professional to determine which type of ginseng might be most appropriate for you. Personalized ginseng. Exactly. I like it. Makes sense. 
Okay, next question is from David, who asks, I'm an athlete, and I'm interested in trying ginseng to improve my performance. What's the best way to use it for that purpose? So David ginseng has become pretty popular among athletes. Yeah. And research suggests that it may indeed have performance-enhancing benefits. Interesting. Its potential to enhance energy, reduce fatigue, and support endurance make it a potentially valuable tool for athletes. What would you recommend in terms of how to use it? For athletes, I would recommend considering ginseng extract or capsules. Okay. For consistent dosing and convenience. Makes sense. Taking it before workouts might offer a boost in energy and stamina. Right. While taking it after workouts could help with recovery. Mm. However, it's important to start with a low dose and gradually increase it as needed, paying close attention to your body's response. Yeah. And as always, talking to your doctor or a sports medicine professional right. before adding any new supplement to your regimen is crucial, mm -hmm. especially if you have any underlying health conditions or are taking other medication. Good advice. Safety first, always. <laughs> All right, this next question is from Maria, and it's an important one. She asks, can ginseng interact with any medications? I'm currently taking antidepressants, so I'm a bit hesitant to try it. Maria, that's a very important consideration. Ginseng can potentially interact with certain medications, including antidepressants. It's absolutely crucial to discuss any potential interactions with your doctor or pharmacist before starting ginseng. Right. They can assess your individual situation taking into account your medical history and current medications and advise you on whether ginseng is safe for you to take. Right. They may also recommend adjusting the dosage of either your medications or the ginseng to minimize any potential risks. So it's really about having that open communication with your healthcare provider and yeah. making sure everyone's on the same page. Precisely. It's always better to err on the side of caution when it comes to mixing medications and supplements. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on to a question from John. Is ginseng safe for long-term use or should it be cycled on and off? That's a great question, John. Yeah. And one that comes up often. While ginseng is generally considered safe for most people when used in moderation, yeah. some experts recommend cycling ginseng to minimize the risk of potential side effects and possibly enhance its effectiveness over time. What does cycling look like in this case? So it could involve taking ginseng for a certain period of time, yeah. let's say a few weeks or months, then taking a break for a similar duration, and then repeating the cycle. This can help your body to reset. Okay. And may prevent any potential buildup of the herb. Makes sense. So how long should those cycles be? That can vary quite a bit depending on the individual, that the type of ginseng being used. Yeah. And the reason for taking it, it's best to discuss this with a healthcare professional who can make personalized recommendations based on your specific situation. So there's no magic formula, right. but it's worth exploring what works best for your body and your needs. Okay, we have time for one more question before we move on to our final part. This one is from Lisa, and she asks, I've heard that ginseng can help with anxiety. Is that true? And if so, how does it work? Well, Lisa, that's a question that's getting more attention from researchers these days. Interesting. While ginseng is better known for its energy-boosting effects, right. there's emerging research suggesting that it may also have calming properties mm. that could potentially help with anxiety. I'm curious, what's the thinking behind that? Well, remember when we talked about ginseng being an adaptogen? Yeah. That ability to help the body manage stress right. could play a role in reducing anxiety symptoms. Okay. Some studies have shown that Ginseng may help regulate cortisol levels, mm -hmm. which is the hormone released in response to stress. Uh -huh. When cortisol levels are chronically elevated, it can contribute to feelings of anxiety and overwhelm. So ginseng might help bring those cortisol levels back into balance. Exactly. There's also some evidence that ginseng may affect certain neurotransmitters in the brain that are involved in mood regulation. Okay. But we need more research to fully understand those mechanisms. So there's definitely potential there, but it sounds like the research is still in the early stages. It is. Yeah. And as with any potential health benefits, it's important to be cautious and not overstate the claims. Right. More research is needed to confirm ginseng's effectiveness for anxiety, to understand the optimal dosage and types of ginseng for this purpose, and to identify any potential risks or interactions. Great points. I'm sure our listeners will appreciate that balanced perspective. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for listener questions in this part of our ginseng deep dive. But don't worry, we'll be back with part three to wrap things up, share some final thoughts, and leave you with some key takeaways. Welcome back to the final part of our ginseng deep dive. 
Yes. We've covered a lot of ground from ancient traditions to like the cutting edge research. Yeah. It feels like we've really journeyed through centuries of knowledge about this remarkable root. We have. And what's so fascinating is that ginseng's story is still being written. Yeah, absolutely. But we're learning more and more about its potential benefits all the time. It's true. And it's not just one thing either. We've yeah. talked about its potential to boost energy, enhance cognitive function, mm. support the immune system, and even maybe play a role in heart health and blood sugar regulation. Yeah. It's like this little root is packed with possibilities. It really speaks to the power of nature and just the incredible complexity of plants. Ginseng is a perfect example of how traditional wisdom can lead us to new scientific discoveries. Absolutely. Now, before we wrap up, I want to touch on something we talked about earlier, the importance of personalized ginseng. Yeah. Like finding what works for you. Absolutely. That's a key takeaway from our deep dive. Just like with any health approach, there's no one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to ginseng. The best type of ginseng for you, the ideal dosage, and even the best way to take it. It all depends on your individual needs and goals. So it's not as simple as just grabbing any ginseng product off the shelf and hoping for the best. Exactly. You really need to do your research, talk to your healthcare provider, and maybe even experiment a bit to find what works best for you. It's about understanding the different types of ginseng, the potential benefits, and any possible risks or interactions. Yeah, it's like finding the right key for your own unique lock. Exactly. Now, I'd be remiss if we didn't acknowledge that as exciting as the research on ginseng is, there's still so much more to learn. Absolutely. We're just scratching the surface when it comes to understanding the full potential of ginseng. Yeah. We need more research to confirm its effectiveness for various conditions to understand its long-term effects and to optimize its use for different individuals. So it's an ongoing journey of discovery. And that's what makes it so fascinating. Mm -hmm. As we conclude our deep dive into the world of ginseng, I want to leave you with a final thought to ponder. With its rich history, its diverse potential benefits, and the ongoing research, where do you see ginseng fitting into your own wellness journey? Is it something you're curious to explore further? I encourage you to keep asking questions, keep learning, and keep seeking knowledge. Until next time, keep diving deep. If this video has been of value to you, please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification button so that you will be notified when we upload new videos. Thank you.